Hello and welcome to Tudor World. This ancient building is nestled unassumingly in the sleepy medieval market town of Stratford-upon-Avon, with reports of the ghost of an 18th century serial murderer and witchcraft practices within the walls of the building. Join me in this video as we go over some of the history, hauntings and some of my personal experiences from when I visited Tudor World. I'm Mike and if you've got your K2 at the ready, let's go find some ghosts. Chapter 1 The History Tudor World, or the Falstaff's Experience as it's also known, is located at Shreve's House at number 40 Sheep Street in Stratford-upon-Avon. Yes, that's right, Stratford-upon-Avon, the home of Shakespeare, who allegedly has links to the building, but this could just be a overblown claim as it is the playwright's hometown. Shreve's house is named after the first occupant, William Shreve, who is documented to have been an archer for King Henry VIII and it is believed that the house was gifted to William Shreve by King Henry VIII himself. There's allegedly been a building on the site since 1196, but little seems to be known about the history before it was gifted to William Shreve in the 16th century. The building is one of the oldest in Stratford-upon-Avon and has seen some tumultuous events over its history, such as surviving a fire, the plague, and the British Civil War. The building was also believed to be used as an inn at a time, which was frequented by the previously mentioned William Shakespeare. During the 17th century, the barn behind Shreve's house was stationed to a civil war battalion. It's also believed that many murders took place within the building's walls as it was the preferred lodgings of a serial killer. The building is also said to have links to witchcraft being performed inside, which apparently still happens to this day. And other people such as psychics and mystics have claimed that the building sits atop a crossing point for five ley lines. I'm not sure if there's any actual way to prove this, however. The modern building known as Tudor World is actually a museum and haunted location that you can rent for paranormal investigations. And I can't help but feel that with everything that has gone on in Tudor World, the building is either a magnet for dark and sinister activity, or that the activity has contributed to its haunted reputation. Chapter 2 The Ghosts as I mentioned in the intro to this video, there are a myriad of ghosts that Tudor World claims to have entrapped within its walls. William Shreve, the original occupant, is said to haunt the building, and from memory when I visited Tudor World, Shreve allegedly fell out with Henry VIII and was actually executed. I assume this happened away from the property, but I was actually unable to find any details about this, and this opens up a wider discussion of how hauntings could be formulated in the sense that if he was executed away from the building, why would he necessarily haunt the building itself? The rear of the building, which used to be used as a barn, is thought to be the most haunted area of the building, with guests reporting to feel as if they are being smothered or physically assaulted. And this is the area of the building that is believed to be haunted by the 18th century serial killer, but again, information on this or who it could be seems to be patchy at best. There are also rumours of a ghost of a small boy who is said to haunt the museum and try and pickpocket paranormal investigators and visitors to the museum, as well as another sinister entity wearing a tunic and stockings that brandishes an axe and is known to stand at the top of the staircase. Various mediums have claimed that this is actually William Shreve himself and he doesn't like the thought of people being in what he still considers to be his house. But again, this is just the word of mediums and it's largely unprovable without any sort of tangible evidence to try and back it up. There is also said to be the apparition of an elderly woman who walks up the stairs clutching a candle, as well as a Civil War soldier who is believed to have hidden within the building after deserting the Civil War. Again, the validity of these apparitions is dubious and I'm not entirely sure if there is any historical record to back up who these people could have been or further to the point where these stories could have come from apart from anecdotal stories from other ghost hunters and the caretaker of the museum. Chapter 3 Personal Experiences Early on into starting investigating the paranormal, I was fortunate enough to visit Tudor World with a paranormal group that I was previously a member of. This was actually done before I even started this channel or even started filming our investigations, so unfortunately I don't have any video of this investigation on YouTube. The investigation started off quite slowly with us beginning in the gift shop, and for some reason there seems to me that there is some sort of weird correlation between gift shops and hauntings, as I believe the Jamaica Inn also claims that it has a haunted gift shop, as well as a few other locations. 
Anyway, we did get some EMF activity via the trusty K2 in the gift shop. However, there seemed to be EMF hits all over the building, which I believe was related to wires within walls rather than anything actually paranormal. We also set up a REM pod at the bottom of the front staircase while we were investigating the gift shop. The front staircase is at the end of a short hall adjacent to the gift shop, and this REM pod seemed to trigger of its own accord a couple of times which we actually witnessed when we looked out into the hall and could confirm that the entire team of seven to eight people was in the gift shop at the time. And also no walkie talkies were being used to my knowledge because we didn't have any other teams to walkie talkie to. Once the REM pod activity died down, we then moved upstairs and didn't seem to get anything for the next hour or so. So we decided to go off and take a break. Now, generally speaking, me and Patsy don't really research locations before we investigate them, but it was during the break that Patsy started to do some Googling and found the story of the entity that had been seen at the top of the stairs. Excited because this kind of correlated to the REM pod activity we were having, we decided to go back into the building to investigate more, and as we approached the REM pod at the bottom of the front stairs, it started to trigger again while we were about six feet away from it. After some calling out, some of the team believed that this was a warning about going upstairs and that we shouldn't do it, which we duly ignored and headed upstairs anyway to continue investigating. We were met with another couple of quiet hours where nothing really happened, so we decided to split the team into two smaller teams. After doing this, the majority of the team decided to go up into the attic area, which includes a seance table, while the other three of us being myself, Patsy, and a third person that I refer to as T decided to stay on the second floor. We were directly below the seance room in the area of the building that I believe used to be the barn, and from researching this video, the area where some of the more sinister hauntings are said to have occurred. For some more context, directly below us on the ground floor between two rooms was some form of wooden panel or walking board, which had a slight slope to it as one of the rooms was slightly higher than the other downstairs. And when someone stepped on the board, it would make a clunk sound, which was very loud and quite obvious as to what it was. And this will come up later. While myself, Patsy and T were at the top of the back staircase, the building seemed to fall silent as if some form of tension was building and we were about to experience a wave of activity. And a wave of activity is exactly what happened. This started when T said that they thought they caught something moving out the corner of their eye in the hall next to the room that we were in. This would put both T and Patsy on edge, but obviously it had no effect on me because I'm well hard and don't get scared. The next event that happened shortly afterwards was the very obvious clunk of the wooden board below us. This put Patsy and T more on edge and in Patsy's words, she was more fearful that the building had been broken into rather than the clunk being paranormal in nature which in a way is testament to how loud this obvious clunk was. By this point, Patsy was pretty much frozen in a state of fear and this was before the final event of this wave happening. After the clunk directly below us, we heard three or four distinct footsteps on the front staircase at the other end of the building. I fully expected the footsteps to continue and for the caretaker to pop his head round and see how our investigation was going. But this just didn't happen. The sound of the footsteps had all but vanished and I was left so confused as this seemed to be too real to be paranormal, but then thinking back, there were no footsteps before or after the fall that we actually heard on the front staircase. I asked Patsy and T if they would like me to go and investigate, but they didn't want me to leave them alone, which caused a minor joke where I said, well, we're paranormal investigators, that's what we should be doing. But anyway, Patsy and T didn't want to be alone, so I had to respect their wishes and not just run off down a hall chasing phantom footsteps. We finally managed to muster up the courage to leave the building via the back staircase with me going first because Patsy and T were too scared to go first and them following very, very closely behind. And from that moment on, we didn't actually go back into Tudor World to investigate any more, not only because of the traumatic episode that Patsy and T had experienced, but also because this was about three in the morning by this point and we actually had quite a long drive home. So we decided to call the investigation and head home. And that was our experiences at Tudor World. Although the ghost story seemed dubious, myself and Patsy had some experiences there that we can hand on heart say we believe were paranormal. But I can fully respect that there could be a rational explanation for this, especially as I didn't actually get to go and investigate the footsteps after they happened. As you can imagine, we are very, very keen to go back to Tudor World and investigate it privately to see if we can have any form of similar experiences. We haven't got anything set in stone for our return at this point though. Anyway, that's this video done. Let me know your experiences at Tudor World in the comments below. Watch this video next for our recent investigation of a haunted theatre. Bye.